Good evening, everyone. Uh, so just adding to what Tim just told us on the lecture, our brain, scientists prove that our brain lie to us four hours a day. So yes, we are not right <laughs> a lot of times. And why it does that? Because it needs to save energy. So most of the information that comes to us is based on prediction. Prediction of things that happens before. So before we even notice, some information comes to us, your brain will predict what to do with that. And sometimes the prediction is not right. And even so, you're going to act as if was. So we are not right all the time. As a matter of fact, we are wrong a lot of times, not most of it. That's the good news. But yeah, so keep your open mind for the information that we're gonna about to talk about because that's new information for some of you. And maybe for most of you, because even for me, I'm going to try to stick to the script that I, I put here because that doesn't give too much space for personal add-ins. We're going to talk about something that it's informed to us by spirits because we, we experience that, but because we are incarnated, we don't remember. So that's nothing for me to add too much on it. But first, let's just conceptualize spiritism for the ones that are here and then we, we go, it's right here. Spirituality, logic, and science meet perfectly. So it's about what science can prove. So it's not about any hocus pocus and about any things that are not real and just because we cannot see are not real. Science proves pretty much everything that the doctrine tells and uh, vice versa. As a matter of fact, Alan Kardec, which is the codifier of the, the, the doctrine, uh, that is a page that he says, if science proves spiritism wrong, stick to science. That's a bold statement. That's really a bold statement. And so far, we're here, so that's good. Uh, we're gonna talk about many lives. We're gonna talk about the statement that Jesus said that in my father's, uh, my father's home, uh, my father has many homes and many houses and many places, and what that means. And we're going to talk about what the Spiritists inform on the Spiritist book, chapters 166 to 188, and also through the vision of one of the great scientists that we had in planet Earth, and his name was Albert Einstein. And if you don't know, Albert Einstein was a really powerful medium, although he didn't know. He got a lot of information from the spirits, including the relativity theory. So many times his friends caught him talking out loud what they thought that was talking to himself and what this, the doctrine informs that, yeah, he was talking to spirits. He is, He's getting some guidance from them. But let me just say it, and then you take your, your, your own conclusions. So what Einstein said about many lives, about the world, and about the man. <coughs> the human mind, no matter how highly trained, cannot grasp the universe. We are in the position of a little child entering a huge library who whose walls are covered to the ceiling with books in many different tongues. The child knows that someone must have written those books. It does not know who or how. It does not understand languages in which they are written. The child notes a de definitive plan in the arrangement of the books, a mysterious order, which it does not comprehend, but only dimly suspects. That, it seems to me, is the attitude of the human mind, even the greatest and most cultured toward God. We see a universe marvelous arranged, obeying certain laws, but we understand the laws only dimly. Our limited minds cannot grasp the mysterious force that swells the constellations. 
Out yonder there was this huge world which exists independently of us human beings and which stands before us like a great eternal riddle, at least partially accessible to our inspection and thinking. The contemplation of this world beckoned like a liberation. Yeah, there was not a spiritual guide. There was not somebody that was involved in any religion. He used to call him atheist. And even so, these words touch us deeply, doesn't it? And then comes spiritism and inform us. Kardec asked the spirits, how can the soul that has not attained to perfection during the corporeal life complete the work of purification? Because spiritism tells us that we, we come here to get better, to get rid of some issues that we had in the past. And by past, it's not the past that we know. It's the one that we don't know. So how can we purify ourselves. Any clues? By undergoing the trial of a new existence. So, it's really naive to think that our soul, which is us, the body is not us, the body is just a vessel. Our soul was made for just one participation, one incarnation. We are eternal souls. We know that the soul doesn't die. It keeps on going. So in order to purify, in order to evolve, in order to get more knowledge, it needs to incarnate. Because when the soul incarnates, forgets the past, and has a new trial that sometimes the, the, the soul itself chooses, and sometimes it's dictated to purify. The soul has then many corporeal existences? The answer is yes. We all have many such existences. So that's the thing. We have many lives. We just don't remember, but we have many lives. Why? Because Spiritism said that we, we were born without knowledge. And from existence to existence, we start accruing knowledge, which is somehow, sometimes is good and sometimes not that good. Just look inside yourself and see what you like about yourself and what you don't. If you have things that you don't like about yourself, that means that we learn some things as well that are not that A-OK. -okay. This is a scientist. I'm going to play this video for you guys if I can. I don't know what's not. Oh, because it's here. What's the soul? To me, the soul is the essential nature of all of us. It's the, the deeper mind. It's the part of us that goes on, that never dies, that comes into physical form and goes out of physical form. But it's, it's not complex. That's our real nature. Yeah. Did you believe in souls before you met Catherine? I don't think so. Mm -hmm. when, when I say agnostic, it was like, I, I don't know that I believe in God even at this. I, I'm aware of it, and it could be. I'm just not sure. I, I need more proof, more evidence, and I got that. Mm -hmm. So now how do you define God? Uh, to me, God is indescribable. We don't have words and concepts, but it's in part understanding the energy that connects all of us together. It's a clue into the nature of God. One of the first comments that Catherine made was, they tell me, masters, they tell me there are many gods for God is in each of us. That tells me that God is in each atom and subatomic particle of our being. That's our essence. We're distilled from that. Mm -hmm. But we can't describe it because it has qualities.
qualities that we don't even have words for. This is like beyond the dog whistle. You have to have the, this entire spectrum. But it's beyond the highest energy that we can imagine. But it possesses God. Compassion, incredible compassion, omniscience, wisdom, love, all of those qualities and more. A long answer. I love it, though. Do you pray? I do. I do. I pray. I meditate. Because I know that these are, um, how to put it, connections that we make with the divine. The concept of grace, that mm -hmm. we can have interventions that help us. So I pray, of course, because I know, I know beings are listening, and we need to have faith in those beings. Whatever we want to call them, whatever names, it's beyond names. Okay, this is the question for you. <laughs> what do you think happens when we die? Oh, well, I think that we never die because we're never really born. We existed before. You existed before this birth. You were probably a spiritual guide to your mother or someone else. You were on the other side. Then you come into a physical body as a baby and you go through a life. And the next stage, though, is leaving the body. So if you are the soul, you never die. When the body dies, you go on. Thank you so much. Oh. Thank you. So who's Catherine? <laughs> who's Catherine? Here's the author. That's Dr. Brown. Twice. 1.5 million copies sold. Many lives, many masters. Who's Catherine? Catherine was a patient a young patient for 18 months. And he was like, she was suffering from recurring nightmares and chronic anxiety attacks. When his traditional methods of therapy failed, Dr. Weiss turned to hypnosis and was astonished and skeptical when Catherine began recalling past life traumas, which seemed to hold the key to her problems. Not just that, she started given communications to about issues of Dr. Weiss. Things that are facts, things that were happening during the time that he was treating Catherine. So this, is, this was a proof to him. If you heard what I just heard as well, he didn't believe in God. He didn't believe in religion. He didn't believe in anything. But then he started interviewing somebody that was under hypnosis. And this person was talking about information that she's not supposed to have. Information about past lives. Information about doctor's vice past life. Information about doctor's life, actual life, that she didn't have access to. Personal information. And to help him as well to solve many problems of himself. Isn't that something? Isn't that, and then he wrote a book and he went to Oprah just to say that he believed. That's most of us, right? St. Thomas, we need to see it to believe. That's a lot of proof out there. We live many lives, not just this one. This one is a progress of other lives to a better understanding of what we're doing here and what we need to do to progress. Do we need to accomplish all different corporeal existence upon this earth? Because if we have a lot of lives, they're all here in planet earth. Well, only in the Milky Way, how many million stars do we have and planets? It's really hard. And it's really naive, per se, to believe that planet Earth is the only one that is inhabited. Right? Millions and millions of stars, millions and millions of planets, and only planet Earth has humans. Yay, we are so great. Maybe not. Maybe we are in the middle of the evolution chain. Maybe we are going to change to better our Planet Earth will change to better um, 
world in terms of energy. Because think about it. We are made of energy, right? Physics, atoms, quantum physics. If this energy is positive, we attract positive energy. If spirits are made of energy and they are not incarnated, we're going to attract positive spirits when we are in a positive state. But what happens when we are not? What kind of spirits do you think that we call to ourselves, to our side? What kind of thoughts, maybe if you get in tune with them, they are going to start providing and you think this, those are your thoughts. And that's how it works. So, do we accomplish all different corporeal existence upon this earth? Do you think so? Not all of them. For those existence take place in many different worlds. The world in which you now are is neither, neither the first nor the last of these. But one of those that are the most material and then furthest removed from perfection. What are they saying here? As material as the world is, further from perfection it is. Meaning that the most advanced worlds are not that material. As a matter of fact, are more plasma, more, you know, ethereal material than just flesh, blood, and all the, the materials that we have here in planet Earth. They're the basis of the composition of our body as well. Okay, I have a quote here. Sorry, let me go back. And just just quoting Einstein again, because I'm gonna I'm gonna give the spiritual or the spiritist vision, and then I'm gonna give you the science vision through Einstein. A human being is a part of the whole, called by us universe, a part limited in time and space. He experiences himself, his thoughts and feelings as something separate from the rest, a kind of optical delusion of his consciousness. This delusion is a kind of prison for us, restricting us to a personal desires and to affection for a few persons near to us. Our, our text must be to free ourselves from this prison by widening our circle of com compassion to embrace all living creatures and the whole nature in its beauty. So, he was just asking us, stop looking at your belly button. Start looking out elsewhere. Start looking to what's surrounding you. Start looking at the beauty. Have you guys paid attention to the sky when you were coming today? The colors? Wow. There's no painter that can reproduce that. I'm sorry that we, have, we saw so many beautiful painters and talented. They cannot put that in the canvas. It's for our eyes. It's for our memory. It's to touch us. But you need to will to be willing to see it. Otherwise, it's just another day. It's just another trip. I used to work at Disney for 10 years. And most of my days start at 5 o'clock in the morning. When, when the sun was rising, I was in the middle of the beeline. And I believe that I saw many of those sunrises because I took time to look at it. Because if I focus in my day, it's just my day. But the sun rises different and sets different every single day. Why do I know that? I spent a month in what we call the, the equivalent in Brazil for Everglades. We call Pantanal. And we record every single night all the sunsets and every single morning all the sun rises and I watch all of them in the screen they're not the same color they're not the same they are all different but we need to look at it and that's what they what Einstein was inviting us to and what the spirits say if you're not incarnated in this world take advantage and love the world that you're incarnated at does the soul at each new corporeal existence pass from one world to another or can accomplish several existence on the same globe? 
Again, what you guys think? Can you incarnate multiple times in planet Earth? It may live many times on the same globe, if be not sufficient advanced to pass into a higher one. So here we go again. It's energy. If you're not in that level of energy that the other planet has, you're going to stay in the planet that has the same level of energy that you do. And you're going to incarnate in the same planet again. And here comes Einstein again. Strange is our situation here on Earth. Each of us comes for a short visit, not knowing why, yet sometimes seeming to divine, to divine a purpose. From the standpoint of daily life, however, that is one thing that we do know, that the man is here for the sake of other men. Above all, for those upon whose smiles and well-being of our own happiness depends. Again, he is inviting us to refine our energy, to think about the goodness, to think about good things. And maybe if you, if you follow that path, again, maybe the next incarnation will be in a different world. Not saying that one is better than the other, it's just a progress. And that's how it goes. Can we come back to the same world after having lived in other worlds? Tricky, right? Well, assuredly you can. You may already have lived elsewhere upon the earth. There are many spirits that come back here with missions. Mother Teresa, Gandhi, Jesus. I'm, I'm talking about the big ones, but there are, there's, there's a lot of different ones that come to help, to do some tasks, to make this world better. And they can incarnate in planet Earth, although they have a energy to incarnate in a more advanced one. It is necessary to live again upon this earth? What do you think? A lot of eyebrows go, what? What? No. But if you do not advance, you may go into a world no better than this one, or even worse. And now I'm going to talk to you about the star called Capella, or Chapel. And there is a book that calls, that it's not, we don't have it in English, but it's called The Rebellious of the Exiles from Capella. And they talk about a high advanced world where, although they had a lot of intelligence, they had a lot of advancement, some spirits were no good, were up to bad things. And the only way to make them progress is to give them the opportunity to reincarnate in a world no better or even worse than Capella. Guess where they incarnate? I give you one chance. Mars. <laughs> yeah, there you go, Tim. You rock. No. Planet Earth. And they came with the task to evolve the human beings, the souls that were here. So now we have a lot of questions why the Egyptians the Egyptian civilization, the pharaohs civilization disappeared. Why the Mayas disappear? Why all this civilizations that bring us so many advantages, like the, the water uh, systems and well, you name it, the calendar. They brought so many things and where are they now? Probably back to Capella or even higher. Because they came here to fulfill a task. It doesn't matter how many incarnations they're going to take to fulfill this task. But once you fulfill, 
you can go back. And that's amazing. And this book, uh, it's pretty interesting if you can have somebody to translate it for you, if you don't understand Portuguese, or even if you have a Google. Sometimes Google is not going to be that accurate, but give some, you know, some change and just understand what the, the meaning and you're going to you're going to know that this is a, a very interesting um, take in history that it's not in every single book as a matter of fact <laughs> just a few books that tells about this Really? Yes. Which one? Uh, Camino da Luz? Yes. It's on the way to the light. It tells mm -hmm. a little bit of, of the story. Yeah, I didn't find it. I, I, I searched on Google, but I couldn't find the translation one. I, I searched on Fab. I searched yeah, on... we have it here. That's good. Yeah. That's good. So we have the, in the way to light, which is tells a little bit about that, too. And it's very interesting. This is from uh, the spirit Emmanuel, and it was uh, channeled by Chico Xavier, which was the greatest medium in, in Brazil. Okay. Now he's on the other side, probably telling us what to do. <laughs> or, or, the, or the lucky ones that can talk to him. Can spirits come to this world for the first time after have been incarnated in other worlds? If you use the same logic, probably, yes. Just as you may go into other ones, all the worlds in the universe are united by the bounds of solidarity that is not accomplished by one of them, it's accomplished in another. Spirits may remain stationary, but they never retrograde. So normally they can, if you don't evolve, you don't go back. You stay in the same um, energy on the same stage that you are. Who are they that are compelled to recommence the same existence? The ones who fail in the fulfillment of their mission or the one or in the endurance of the trial appointed to them? So normally, if we stay in the same um, state of mind, in the same energy, in the same uh, position that we were, we're gonna stay, um, we're gonna reincarnate, maybe to do the same in a different um, set setup, but probably in the same world or as the previous light set in a world that is less advanced as the previous one that you, this is not retrograde. This is just a matter of energy that you are, full, that you are um, bringing that you are creating to yourself, and it's, if it's compatible or not to the world that you've been reincarnated previously. Can spirits live corporally in a world relatively inferior to the one in which they have already lived? Yes. When they have to fulfill a mission in aid of progress, and in this case, the joyful, they joyful accept the tribulations of such an existence because this will furnish them with means of advancement. So yes, we can see spirits that are more advanced than the, the world that they are incarnating just come to aid, to help, to give some um, hope, to give some, like the, the Capella spirits, to make the the world that they are incarnating in to progress. Do you guys believe in UFOs? Yeah? Are they flesh and blood just like us? Then would they come with the space spaceships? <laughs> we don't know that, right? But I think that the best information that we can um, acknowledge or we can put together, assemble with this, is that, yes, all the spirits that come from all the worlds, 
in that terms, are UFOs. But they don't need to come with a body that you can see. They don't need to come with a vessel that flies. They will just incarnate. And they have an intelligence superior than most of the other spirits that live. Or they have a behavior that is totally different than the others. Mostly, those are what we can call UFOs, or they can call aliens, sorry. Those aliens are not but, nothing but spirits that come from outside. Because, yes, there's a lot of worlds outside, and there's a lot of life outside planet Earth. So, yes, aliens exist, not just in the sense that human beings think, because we try to compare everything to our mirror. Everything needs to be closer to what we know. So if you see the aliens on these um, movies, some are really terrifying, but they were based on something that exists on planet Earth, on some creature, some form of life that exists here. Nothing was taken from the ethereal. So what we can see is what we can reproduce. They can manipulate matter too because they're evolved. Exactly. They can manipulate matter as well. So the thing is, that can happen. We didn't see it. But it has happened, right? It has. We know that. Jesus, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And he manipulated matter. And he, he, he manipulated matter. And he was from a different world. And he lived among spirits. But for us, until understanding spiritism, he was just a man. Right? And he, he needs to come as a man. Otherwise, if he comes with some, with, you know, some other form, he will be like, push away. Because we don't like what is different. That's uh, still inside of us. It's, it's kind of hard. Let's move on. In passing from this world to, into another one, does the spirit retain the intelligence which he possesses in this one? Probably, right? Undoubtedly, he does. Intelligence never lost. But he may not have the same means of manifesting it, for that depends on both his degree of advancement and the quality of the body he will take. You can, you can be a genius, but if you incarnate in a body that cannot speak. Yeah, speak or move or something like that, you cannot put your whole um, power outside everything that you know. In proportion, as the spirit becomes purified, the body, the body in which he clothes himself also approach more nearly the spiritual nature. The matter of which his body is composed is less dense. He no longer crawls heavenly on the surface of the ground. His body, his body, bodily needs are less gross and the, and the various living beings in this higher world are no longer obliged to destroy one another in order to feed themselves. A spirit incarnated in those worlds enjoy a greater degree of freedom and possess in regard to objects a distance. Orders of perception of a nature unknown to us. He sees with his eyes what we see only through the duration of a lifetime. So, as advanced as we are, as we get, we don't need a dense body anymore. We can have a more ethereal body. And that's pretty much, I believe, this is my belief, okay? This is not what Spiritism said. But that's pretty much why human beings go to other outer space, other planets, Go down and see nothing. Maybe this, the, the, the bodies are not there because we are looking for bodies made of something that is touchable, something that is 3D, and maybe 3D is not the way that the bodies of that particular world, the particular planet work. So 
We never know. It's really hard. And that's why I stick to what is saying here because we don't have this knowledge yet. We do have, we, all we have is what Spiritism tells us. Have the human beings who inhabit the other world's body, have the human beings who inhabit the other world's bodies like ours? Do they have bodies like ours? They undoubtedly have bodies because it's necessary for the spirit to be clothed with matter in order to act upon the matter. But this envelope is more or less material according to the degree of purity in, at which each spirit has arrived. And it's this Gradations of purity that decide the different worlds through which we have, pa we have to pass. For in our fathers there are many mansions, and therefore many degrees among those mansions. The first slide is a lot of planets, so just make the connection. All the planets, all the mansions, all the places that we can incarnate. And we're going to have a, a body accordingly to the mansion that we are living in. I think I put an Einstein quote here, maybe the not the next one. Is the physical and moral state of the living beings of each globe always the same? From what we learned so far, yes or no? Yeah. No. Worlds like the beings that live in them are subject to the law of progress. All have begun like yours by being in a state of inferior inferiority, and the earth will undergo a transformation similar to that which has been accomplished by the by the others. It will become a terrestrial terrestrial paradise when the men by whom it is in habit have become good. So this is the outcome. We come here to perfect ourselves. We come here to try to become the closest to what we think that is good. And this is about perception as well, because what I think that is good is probably not what you think and what you think and what you think. But as long as we try to go from what we are now to what we think that is better or is good, we're trying to progress, we're trying to achieve something. And if every single being in planet Earth will do that, what happens to the energy of this planet? It will change. It will change fantastically. Are there worlds in it? in which the spirit ceasing to inhabit a material body has no longer any other envelope than the pan spirit? Yes. And this envelope itself becomes etherealized that for you, it is as thought it did not exist. This is the state of the fully purified spirits. So there are worlds where you cannot see with our eyes. So. Which worlds are there? We don't know. Can we get to those worlds with our vessels, with our um, spaceships? We don't know. But spiritism and the spirits inform that, yeah, those are, there are worlds out there that are just like that. A spirit incarnate in those worlds enjoys a greater degree of freedom and possess in regard to objects at a distance. Orders a perception of a nature unknown to us. He sees with his eyes what we see only through the duration of a lifetime. And the different worlds appear to be proportionate to the degree of moral and physical superiority of each world. And this is perfectly consonant with the reason. The less material is the body, the less subject to the vicissitudes which disorganize it. The purer the spirit, the less subject it is to the passions which undermine and destroy it. So, this, the purer the spirit is, less need to have a physical body. 
less need to be tested, to be tempted, or to go undergo to tests that we are undergo in planet Earth. And that's the good news, right? Because that's what we aim for. That can take some time, but that's what we aim for. Do the pure spirits inhabit special worlds or are they in universal space without being attached to any particular globe? The pure spirits inhabit certain worlds, but they are not confined to them as men are not confined to the earth. They possess in a higher degree than any others the power of instantaneous locomotion, which is equivalent to ubiquity. Not saying that Einstein was a pure spirit, but Einstein has a quote that is really interesting. My religion consists of a humble admiration of the illimitable superior spirit who reveals himself and the slight details we are able to perceive with our frail and feeble mind. It's really like he was understanding something that we still don't understand. He was talking about um, coming to planet Earth as a trip, not as, as the lifetime or whatever comes after the donut does not exist. So he was always looking for what can we do best and what can we take when we discarnate. And this is somebody that declared himself atheist. It's pretty interesting. From the standpoint of daily life, however, there is one thing that we know, that we are here for the sake of each other, above all for those upon whose smile and well-being our own happiness depends, and also for the countless unknown souls which whose fate we are connected by a bond of sympathy. Many times a day I realize how much my own outer and inner life is built upon labels of my fellow men, both living and dead, and how earnestly I must exert myself in order to give in return as much as ha I have received. That is a great motto to live by, right? And with this information, I leave you. Thank you. <laughs>